I first saw my analyst of 66. We are now in our 50th year, and we're beginning to get somewhere. <laughs> Please welcome Dr. Oliver Sack. He was the first major intellectual who spoke about diseases to the general public in a way that they could understand. His writing brought back a central aspect of medicine, treat the person and not the disease. Life threw so many things at him, some of which he brought on himself. He was the first to admit. It was at that time they discovered that he was gay. Where do you go where your mother calls you an abomination? You go to San Francisco and stop writing home. From an early age, it was understood that I was going to be a doctor. My brother Michael was diagnosed as schizophrenic. I became terrified for him. Michael was one of the reasons Oliver did what he did. Rick Hung here for Hollywood First Look Features. Today, I'm with director Rick Burns, and we are talking his documentary, Oliver Sacks, His Own Life. Rick, I wanted to tell you congratulations. How did you get involved with this project? Rick, thanks for having me. You know, it's been really the project of a lifetime. We got a call in early 2015 from someone I'd never met before, Kate Edgar, who was Oliver Sacks' closest working colleague, brilliant editor. She'd worked with him for 30 years. And through a friend of a friend, she called me up and said, um, thanks for taking the call. Oliver Sacks is dying. Will you come in and fin film him? He was 81 years old in the early 2015, and he wanted to sum things up. And so here is a dying man uh, at the end of a remarkable life um, who was for the first time going to make himself his own case history. Um, he was going to talk about things that he had never talked about beyond a very closely held group of people, his sexuality, his very, very difficult childhood. Wonderful and difficult, like whose childhood isn't. Um, the torments of his adulthood. Uh, his loneliness, he was celibate for 35 years. He fought with every figure of authority he ever came into contact with. He was fired from every job he ever had. So the image one might acquire, certainly I had, of Oliver Sacks through his writing. Avuncular, erudite, empathetic, infinitely insightful, incredible writer. Um, we didn't know, no one knew he was gay. No one knew he was tormented. No one knew that he was driven by a host of inner demons. And that was what came out in his biography and came out in in spades, I think, in, in the footage, you know, uh, 90 hours of footage with Oliver. To know him briefly, intensely towards the end of his life and try to, taking a cue from him, create his own story was a remarkable opportunity. Is that hard for you as a director knowing that I'm, recording somebody right now, you know, I'm documenting it, which, which, which should also be gratifying to know that, you know, you're leaving his mark right. in the world, but is it tough for you also to know that he's terminal and you're like, I'm, I'm you know, documenting a dying person. Here he was it, it, at this triple kind of peak, old, 81, um, having just come clean in an unpublished memoir, you know, on the move, and then, facing death. And so the remarkable thing was like, boy, does that focus the mind, his to be sure, but ours. At the last hour of that first five days, you know, it's her 60 hour interview, you know, he read a piece that was as yet unpublished, which was published the next week in the New York Times, announcing to the world that he was going to die, it's called My Own Life a phrase of David Hume, the philosopher, who had written an autobiographical piece when he got a mortal diagnosis, and who was a hero of Oliver. And he read that piece, looking down mostly. Um, and there at the end of five extraordinary days, we were now, you know, we weren't friends, but we had had this intense experience with his partner and his friends and his family. So we were all on the same, in the same boat. There wasn't a dry eye in the house. And Oliver finished that piece saying, most of all, you know, I'm grateful that I have been a sentient being, a thinking animal on this beautiful planet. And for that, I am infinitely grateful. And so he was committed with a purity and a grace that was so beautiful and so inspiring to live it right up to the very end. 
keep writing, keep reflecting. And the gift he gave, as his friend Lawrence Weschler, who comes from New York, said, gave a master class in dying. I mean, I know this is the Hollywood. This is Hollywood. That sounds a little grim, but Rick, it's so inspiring. Well, I found it to be very moving, truthful, and educational. Congratulations again. The film is Oliver Sacks, His Own Life. It comes out September 23rd. Until next time, I'm Rick Hong, and you've been watching Hollywood First Look Features. Much of my life has been spent trying to imagine what it's like to be another human being. His great gift was storytelling about the human condition in a medical context, emphasizing the fact that they saw the world in different ways. He would tell these stories so well that people who are brave, lonely, and left out are storied back into the world. Oliver was absolutely dismissed by fellow neurologists. He had his critics. For someone to say that he exploited his patients, I think that's absolutely wrong. Are you a doctor first and then a writer? The real answer is that I'm both, and in important ways they lend together. Oliver never lost that sense of wonder. Ten days before he died, he was writing. I dare tell you what I think. <laughs> People think he's saying, look at the others. He's not saying that. He's saying, look at us.